one of the long ruling empires of the world the empire which unified the south india for almost 3 centuries the empire which is also known as the tamil talascratic empire which is the chola empire hey guys welcome back to our channel today in this video we are going to know all about the chola dynasty chola dynasty is having prominent position in our indian history it is also known as the tamil talascratic empire talascratic empire means the empire at the sea and tamil is the official language of chola dynasty so some people refer chola dynasty as the tamil dynasty and it is one of the long ruling dynasties of the world because like they unified peninsula india from south of tungabhadra and held it as one state for almost 3 centuries so it is one of the long ruling dynasties and the time period on which chola dynasty flourished is referred as the golden age of tamil and if we observe the map on the map we see the pink part the chola dynasty so it unified almost all the south india from 848 to 12 79 AD Chola empire flourished and they have influenced not only India but also other countries like the Sri Lanka Maldives Indonesia and many more countries now let us discuss how we are getting to know all details about the Chola dynasty we can't go back into our past and see who won the battle who conquered south india all these things right so in order to to believe that chola dynasty existed we need some proof so sources are nothing but those kind of proofs so there are various kind of sources available uh, in the chola dynasty so that we can believe that chola dynasty was existed and uh, the sources like inscriptions royal orders literary sources etc etc inscriptions engraved on copper and stone and royal orders displayed they wrote about all their victories on copper plate and showcased this copper plate in particular place so that people will know about their victories and all right so these are the evidences that chola dynasty existed and the founder of chola dynasty was vijayalaya in 1850 he conquered chola kingdom from pallavas and he was succeeded by his son aditya aditya wiped out all the pallavas and he weakened the pandyas and after him purantaka was there but he is not that much of important king but after him rajaraja chola he is one of the main important king of chola dynasty he led naval expedition against shailendra empire shailendra means sri lanka and he conquered the northern sri lanka and he constructed rajarajeshwara temple that is brihadeshwara temple shiva temple at tanjavur and after him his son rajendra chola was very very famous in our history rajendra chola he ruled chola kingdom from 1014 to 1044 ad common era and annexed whole sri lanka he is a great pattern of learning and his title is gangai konda he founded the gangai konda cholapuram so why because he conquered up to the river ganga and collected ganga water in golden pots and named it as chola ganga gangai konda cholapuram and he made that city as the capital and he also conquered andaman and nicobar and the period on which he is there is referred as the golden age of chola art music dance poetry drama philosophy and sculptures paintings religion these are flourished after him his son veera rajendra there are many other kings like rajendra 2 vikrama chola and rajendra 3 and many more kings are there now let us see the administration of chola dynasty the administration is like king is top of the administration the king brahmadeyams were there so these are like uh, the raja gurus of the king so brahmins as spiritual preceptors these are kingdom guides 
and the administration was like king is the main head and mandalams and each mandalam is again classified into valanadus and each valanadu is again classified into nadus and each nadu is having multiple villages also mainly two kinds of villages present in chola dynasty it is very interesting because these two villages are like urs and agrahara agrahara where only brahmins are allowed to live and they don't have to pay any money for their living and they don't have to pay any taxes so these are like rent free they are living freely in the agraharam whereas for the common people for all other caste people they will live in urs so they have to pay taxes to live there so this is the administration and if we talk about the revenue administration for the purpose of like assessing tax the chola undertook extensive land surveys and revenue settlements raja raja 1 and uh, kulatunga 1 and kulatunga 3 appointed people for land survey so that the land could be classified and assessed for the purpose of taxation now let us see the important capitals of the chola dynasty as the kings changes their way of ruling also changes so according to their need they will also change the capitals so likewise they changed the capitals like initially tanjavur is the capital and after that gangai konda cholapuram so these two are very important capitals of chola dynasty and if we talk about the religions chola rulers were saivites so saiva siva represented in two forms lingodbava that is iconic form and natraja that is human form so in these two forms they worshiped shiva and shiva siddhantam which is the philosophical system founded in chola dynasty kulatunga chola was an ardent shaivite so he persecuted all the vaishnavas and one interesting fact was ramanuja charyan left sri rangam and settled in melkota karnataka because of this and let us see the architecture so architecture is dravidian architecture so the dravid temple art is like temples are having birds dancing figures pictorial stories of puranas kings and queens themselves etc and if we observe the structure so the above part is sikara and the below part is viman and garbagruha where the main god is present and mandapa where people like the devotees have to go from mandapa to reach the garbagruha and to worship their god so this is the basic structure of the dravidian temple in every temple there is one water tank is present this is also a unique feature of chola architecture and another important interesting fact is that dwarapalaka is present at the entrance of the temple sculptures of chola architecture were like nataraja they worshiped shiva in the form of nataraja and another interesting idol found in this chola dynasty is ardhanarishwara murti which is the unification of both lord shiva and parvati which is very unique style of sculpture found from the chola dynasty and they have made the sculptures using the lost wax technique lost wax technique is where they use wax to create all the structures for example if they want to create something like for example arrows or something then they will create the candle model of the arrow and then they will insert that model into the mud and then they will melt the wax and then they will pour the molten metal into the hole like the place where the candle is melted the, then uh, so after sometimes what happens means the molten metal will be solidified and we will get what we want so this is the lost wax technique and this is used in indus valley civilization and some people some historians believe that indus valley people after the aryans invasion they flew into the south india and they settled in south india so that may be the fact why they are using the lost wax technique hope you found this video informative if you like this video then please do like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you